how does a comet go from this to this? <laughs> A comic book is a long, time-intensive process, but it all comes down to one original idea. Somebody's got to think it up in the first place. Hey, Rob, man, how do you come up with that idea? I just think you go with what hits you, what it hits you. I mean, I'll be sitting there in church or having lunch or whatever, and just an idea will hit me. Or I'll, I'll be on the freeway in back of the car, and I'll go, Cougar. You know, on the end of the car, Cougar, oh, Cougar, well, well, let me see, Cougar, I could do something with that thing, and then you build on that, and you run into your drill, you know, into your desk, and you sketch it, and hopefully it, it works. Plot or characters, which comes first? A story needs to draw you in to make you care about the character, so one without the other just doesn't exist. Tell us about the last story I did you came up with, what happened? Yesterday I was, I was, uh, <clears throat> went to church, and I, we were sitting there, and, and there was, he said something, he mentioned the word axe, which is a, uh, uh, I mean, a, you know, uh, a, a book in the Bible, and I took Acts, and I said, Advanced Counter-Terrorist Strike Force, and I said, that's good, that's cool, I can do something with that, and I went home and wrote some notes, and I was like, where did that come from? That was so out there. So when you're fleshing out the, the plot, now, are you, are you sketching as you go along? But I'll draw key shots, I'm gonna lay it all out right then, but I'll draw key, you know, shots in the story. So Matt, what's your role in the comic process? From the initial plot creation, you, you go through and you kind of monitor everything, make sure the continuity is correct. Um, you go through the scripting process, you deal with the pencil and make sure the deadlines are met. Um, you deal with the anchors, the colorists, the color separators, uh, all the way to the film production. You deal with the, the printing house, organizing, you know, page count, what page goes where, what ad goes where. You do the letters pages, um, you design the, the credits page, the inside front cover, the inside back cover, and you deal with uh, a little bit of everything. Now, is this the right order? plot, script, art. There's two styles. There's the, what's called the full script style, and then there's the Marvel style. So I'm not sure, I believe it started at Marvel Comics. The full script, like Alan Moore, the workshop script he gave us, has a description of all the all the panel work, what is in what panel, and it also has the word balloons of what they're going to say. Uh, a plot is more, you know, just like a paragraph description of the page, and then the artist goes in, and on a, on a, on a Marvel style plot, the artist has much more creative input. He can go in and, and do a lot more and add a lot more, and then the, the writer will go back and, uh, and script it after that. What do you think is the most important role in the comic process? The most important step is the first one, the plot. I, I mean, if you start with a bad plot, uh, you have nowhere to go. All right, starting of a comic book and conception. We're going to start with an idea here at Extreme Studios with my man Rob Lightbow. I'm a superhero, okay? and I'm like, cool superhero. Good guy. You got superpowers? Oh, yeah, I'm good. Okay, besides being buff, what can you do? Oh, uh, you know, super smart. Okay. Lots, smart. lots of money. Cash. Lots of money. Um, I can drive stick. Stick man! Fast. Like this. Like that. Like that. She's there. Uh, Glory. Evangeline. Uh, Gen 13 girls. It's all the girls. And then there's me, right? They're fighting over me. And I'm like, hey, girls, you know? Phil's angry. Right, like, you know, we, we have superhero business to do. A lot of business. Stop with this 90210 stuff. No, no, and let's, no. let's, you know, do some good work here. Ooh, dick man. Okay, guys, here's Phil's story. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not as easy as coming up with an idea and going with it. First, you have to put the right idea down on paper. And if you don't have the right writer, your comic's not going to go anywhere. That's why I planned out Stick Man's entire life right here. Well, it's just the first draft. Hi there. I'm not especially world-famous comic book artist Ty Templeton, and I'm sitting here in my studio eagerly awaiting the new comic book idea from Phil that's coming my way any moment now. Well, this just in. Phil adds a superhero called Stickman who drives a stick and everyone adores him. Okay, well, technically that is an idea. Phil's going to be driving a stick. We need to show him getting into a car so that we know he's good at it. There's Phil walking up to the car, and here's his millions of adoring fans. 
are all standing around adoring. Uh, for the second panel, it will be Phil, very, very bold and brave, because he's a superhero, a big close-up of his face, getting into the car, looking tough, and then a big close-up, of course, of his superpower as he shifts gears, and then the car screeching off into the sunset. Well, millions of adoring fans continue to adore because, well, that seems to be their job in this story. Well, uh, there's a page of Stick Man finished. Uh, it's, uh, it's not really the best idea I've ever had, but, uh, well, you see what you can do with it. That's what I would have done. Let's move on to Batman, a comic book that people actually are likely to read. The first thing a penciler does when he gets a comic book to draw is he starts visualizing his ideas for the page. So for this particular page, I've been told that Batman and Robin have to be jumping down on some guys on a waterfront dock and causing them all ends of trouble. And as you can see, we're more or less done the layout idea. From this point, we take it to a Xerox machine and we blow it up really huge, and that looks like this. This is it, the very same layout page I did just a moment ago, blown up, I think about 300%. I take it, I put it on the, the light table, put the paper over top of it, and quite literally trace it. Comic books are reduced down from the original art to the printed size. So the qualities of a good penciler are uh, to be able to tell the story well, so that while you're reading it, you're not uh, questioning what's going on. At this point, we'd send this artwork off to that editor I mentioned earlier on, and he would give it to a letterer, and he would letter right over top of my artwork, spoiling my beautiful drawings with his silly letter. So let's hand it to the letterer now. Oh, I've been expecting this. Hi. My name is Guy Templeton, uh, Guy to the French. I I'm, a I'm a professional comic book letterer, and I suppose I've been asked to letter this page of Batman comics. Man, Ty didn't do a really good job on this one. He sort of threw it off quickly. Anyway, the way a comic book letterer works is he gets a piece of script and a piece of artwork at the same time, and the script basically says what's the letter in the artwork, and that's what you do. So the first line of dialogue is, let's go. And you just, it's as simple as this. You just carefully letter it in. The qualities of a good letterer really are just to make sure that he can write legibly, primarily. His job is to put the letters on the artwork and make it look as much like they've been put there by a machine as his hands can make it. There you go. A finished word balloon in a professional comic book. All right, well, that's my job done. Now time to hand it off to the inker so he can do his job. Thank you. I've been waiting for this. My name's Cy Templeton, and I'm a professional cartoonist, and I'm also a client. <sighs> I'm going to be inking this page, and when you ink comic books, basically what you're doing is you're taking the pencil blind, and you're making it really, really black with whatever you have around to make it really black. Some people like to use crow fill pens, which is this. Some people use magic markers. Me, personally, I like to use brushes and India ink because I think I have more control over my line when I do that. The inker sometimes can can help direct the eye by uh, making an area very black next to an area that's very white. Anyway, there you go, Mr. Colorist, sir. Thank you. Hi there. I'm Sly Templeton, the last of the Templeton boys, uh, and I'm going to be coloring this comic book. I'm telling you right now, though, that the method I'm about to show you is an old-fashioned method that's on its way out. Comic books are still colored like this in some places, but for the most part, they're heading towards computers because computers are our friends. And you literally just take these watercolors and you color in the comic book page exactly as you'd like to see it in a printed version. Here it is, all written, penciled, ink colored, lettered, and everything else. Uh, ignore the fact that it says different people did it on this particular credit box. I did it all. We've finally worked out our web address. Check us out at www.antigrav.com. Let's play. Infiltrate. Attack. 